folks, I'm Keith Bowen and this is Hard Rock University. Today we have a blast from the past. These haven't been made in a couple of decades, but nobody has ever made anything like it that I'm aware of and I'm going to show you what I've learned so far. This has been kind of put together but a little bit of fabric cobbling here just for testing purposes. This is a Keen Hydromatic jig and its goal is to recover very fine gold at reasonable throughputs at a low cost. Let's see how it works. Now this is how it comes from the factory. I've made a few changes. This grizzly is specifically designed for placer so you can get rid of the larger rocks. I'm doing crushed bedrock. I don't need it. Ah, come on. So I made it easily removable. It'll also allow you to see what's underneath a little bit easier. Now what you have is a trough here. Essentially it's a very large gold pan. This is a water distribution manifold. This engine has an eccentric on that shaft which oscillates this entire trough. There's some roller... Yeah, they're actually ball bearings and channels there. But basically those are linear bearings and allows it to go back and forth. as this shaft turns. The idea is you inject water in the bottom which kind of creates like a quicksand type material along with the oscillation. You throw in the original material here. This again is a modification specifically designed for microfine gold. It forces all the stuff in this side to go under the water before it can go out. That way that way you know that the gold has been wetted. I've been told that makes a big difference when you're dealing with hard rock. Then it just overflows this side and I'm catching the tailings there. I did the high grade material from the Dreamer Prime yesterday and I'll show you the results in a minute. Now I'm going to go ahead rerun the tailings from yesterday they still have a little bit of gold and all these are just really low grade so we'll just do it for the heck of it I don't have anything else besides the stuff from the uh, uh, Mojave one and I'll do that next but I want to get this complete and totally scavenged right there is the concentrates from yesterday that's some pretty good stuff there and I'm going to get all this done today, well, probably in about an hour or so, and then I will see what the results are. Okay, basically all the material is in the tub right now. I just shoveled out the uh, wheelbarrow and as you can see I didn't even get a full bucket. So now we need to start reducing the amount in the machine and you do that in a fairly simple way. start taking off the surface. And 
And we just keep doing that until we get to that last notch on that bar. Okay, so now we've got the trough on the last notch. Wheelbarrow's full of dirt. Now it's time to shut it down and test it. Okay, here's the panning results. The last little bit of tailings Right in this area here, there's about five specks of micron gold. You know. And here's the concentrates. Now the head grade was probably in the order of 0 0.02, 0 0.03. Now that would show a concentrates grade of more like a quarter ounce to the ton or whatever. And that makes perfect sense considering There is the final results in terms of tonnage. All that I put in there, minus the slimes, is in those six buckets. One of concentrates, the other of tailings. Tailings have very little. Concentrates are pretty good grade. So it seems to do a fairly good job. Well, let's do some calculations here. I'm guessing I lost about one to two buckets of slimes due to overflow. So I'll assume that the cons to tails ratio of about 6 to 1. Therefore the cons grade of an estimated quarter ounce per ton divided by 6 equals about 0.035 head grade. That's pretty consistent with kind of the average of what was tested in those buckets. Still don't have any assay so I can't tell for sure. Now this agrees reasonably well. I would guess I got at least about 80% recovery, maybe better. This also agrees with yesterday's test on the high grade. Here is the tailings test pan of the high grade. And here is the concentrates test pan from the high grade. And here are the buckets of cons with the scoop versus the tailings from yesterday's test. So again, same thing, I'm guessing about 80% recovery or so. My conclusions on this device are several. First of all, it's pretty easy to set up, fairly portable, doesn't have to be leveled precisely, doesn't have to be on a, a concrete pad or anything like that. So that makes it a lot easier to deal with there. It's relatively expensive, or it was. It's not in production anymore, so you can't even get one. Although I believe they're out of patents, so, you know, if you wanted to make one, what the heck. Um, it has pretty good throughput. I mean, you can see I just kind of, you know, dumping those buckets in. So the volume of material that can go through it seems to be pretty good and still get good recoveries of really fine gold. This is hard rock. This is not placer. This is some pretty fine stuff. And uh, the problems that I see with this, it's, it's a big unit. I mean, it took almost all of those buckets of material went into it just to charge the, the unit. So this is not a small thing, okay? This is not for your little weekend prospector who's going to do a couple of buckets worth of stuff. Um, you wind up with a full bucket of concentrates at the end of the day. That's a lot to, to process some other way. But if you're doing small-scale production where you just ran it all day long, put ton after ton after ton, maybe 10 tons or more through it, and then all you wind up with is 50 pounds of concentrates at an 80, maybe 90 percent recovery. I mean, I'm, this is just like my second test run here. So Assuming you could do that, you've, you've done a pretty good thing, but you've got to have a lot of tonnage. You've got to keep, basically, it's a small production machine. It's not for a, a weekend prospector. And you are going to have to do something to get from that bucket of concentrates to a saleable product, a smeltable gold concentrate. Uh, you'll need some other kind of precision concentrator. You could do a lot of hand panning. If you were, no matter what you do with those, I'd take the tailings from that and throw it right back in as your 
to start your charge for the next day. That way you don't lose anything. And it, it seems to do a pretty good job. However, it's not the sort of machine for the small scale prospector. On the other hand, if you're a small scale operator, this might come in real handy or something similar to it. So that's my observation so far. I'll make another video probably in six months or something once I've actually got a fair amount of experience with this thing, see what modifications I want, might want to make. I can already see a couple of things I'd want to change a little bit. And when you're raising it from notch to notch, raise it slowly. Just hold that handle with your hand and pick up slowly, watch the outflow, give it time to get that charge to reconfigure without just overrunning and uh, that seems to do pretty well. So I like it for what it's useful for. I don't know of anything else out there that really does it very well. So that's a good thing. But say like most people, your, your small scale prospectors, are going to really find this device useful. Although they might make something a lot smaller that could be. So interesting, uh, interesting machine. Very interesting indeed. Happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.